Looking for a place for the whole family? Come down to the Toucan Mall in Amelia's Ward, Linden. It's the mall that has it all. We have great food, a relaxing atmosphere, and activities for all ages. Tennis, swimming, and a playground. But the fun doesn't stop after dark. There's even a bar and an arcade. And if you aren't ready to go home yet, we've even got a spacious room for your comfort, complete with air conditioning, Wi-Fi, and a private bathroom. The Toucan Mall can also facilitate your event in our spacious conference hall. We also have a theater with films for the entire family. It's the Toucan Mall located in Amelia's Ward, Linden. Good afternoon to all of you, my friends, well wishers, and everyone who tune into our program. Once again, it's now Thursday, and already it's November 16th, one month and nine days before Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> and the days are just flying by, everything is just happening very quickly. And about this time of the year, we normally talk about uh, disease conditions and what to do about your condition and your eating over the holidays. We have Thanksgiving that's coming up, and Ghana doesn't really celebrate Thanksgiving, not like in the U.S. Some people do, but the Christmas holiday is coming, and we can. it's not too early to start talking about what not to do and what to do and maybe foods to prepare based on your condition, things like that. So today we plan to talk about some of those things and I'd like us to have the lines open. You know, we haven't been able to have the lines open for quite some time. So we'd like the operator to somehow uh, figure a way to get the lines open so we can communicate with some people. We normally do it when we're live in studio, but uh, we haven't been able to be in studio for quite some time. Dr. Richard is in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> but um, somehow we were able to connect and have programs going. We still see lots of people online, remotely, and we, we continue to help people to overcome all sorts of conditions all over the place, including overseas, in many parts of the world, we are uh, we are really. Uh, let me see. Okay, my operator is saying the phone is right there, so don't be afraid to call. When he puts the number on the screen, you can call in, and you know, let us hear your concerns, your views, whatever you have to say. We'll try to help you. Dr. Richard, good afternoon, and welcome again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you and to everyone who's listening. Thank you for the invite. Well, I know this is uh, this is probably your favorite topic. Uh. <laughs> Talking about food and what not to eat. Oh, yeah. And, and what what affects you when you eat certain things. Yeah. And I'm quite sure people will be listening to know what will what will uh, what will affect them when they eat the pearl pot if they cook it the wrong way. You know, <laughs> put too much. Uh, Cow heel and and oh boy, and cow face and <laughs> oh man, <laughs> all of those things that that can really block the arteries and create problems. Talking about block, blocking of the arteries, I've been screening some people recently, and I'm seeing they're they're so they're they're so laden with arteries that are blocked in their brains. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're having headaches and the pressure is going up at night. You know, when you sleep, your pressure should go down. When they sleep and they wake up in the morning, the pressure is high and they're mm -hmm. wondering why is it high. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding when I screen many of them is that the artery is going from the, from the neck to the, or from the head, the brain to mm -hmm. the heart are clogged. I mean, pretty much clogged. Yeah. And they don't understand why. They don't know why it's clogged and, and uh, why why it's gotten that way. But we know it's not something that happens overnight. No, no. It takes a while. 
And um, it, it, it's interesting that the, the arteries to the head and neck love th th that those those arteries are, are one of the first ones to indicate uh, atherosclerosis. Yeah. Yep. 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 Indeed. Well, we, we were looking at, at scenarios with persons who one person said to me that she dreams heavily at night. Mm -hmm. She has lots of dreams at night, and when she wakes up in the morning, she has headache. <laughs> so, so I'm saying to her, maybe maybe she's dreaming about things that is causing her to do a lot of work in her sleep. Oh, and, she's stressing out in her sleep. <laughs> and it's causing her to experience a lot of stress factors and and yeah. maybe worry some things. And and when she wakes up, she's she's experiencing high blood pressure. Yeah, you know. Uh, Especially some people really take uh, the dreams very seriously, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, a lot of times, you know, people, you can you can get a heart attack sleeping in your bed. Exactly what I said to her. Many persons get heart attacks and aneurysms. Yeah. And, and it, may be, it may be linked to some of the deaths that occur when people go to sleep at night and don't wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, we, uh, they, they, there's a lot. There's a lot to be said about that because when most times if an autopsy is done, you'd find that they had an aneurysm or, or yeah. cardiac arrest or something like that. But yeah. they don't understand why. Mm -hmm. Why it happened, you know? Why did it choose when a person goes to sleep before it happens? You see, so it is so it is so ultimately important that persons be conscious of what is happening in their arteries. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you eat food in the evening and you go to bed, lots of things happen with the digestive process. Yeah, yeah. And if you have arteries that are very narrow, then you mm -hmm. never know what particles could go through there mm -hmm. and create an aneurysm, a blockage, and next thing you know, an artery is broken in your sleep. Yeah, and, and the thing is when you, uh, when you eat a meal, I mean, anytime you eat a meal, most of the blood after you eat goes to the stomach to digest the food. Exactly. So blood to the head is sort of robbed, you know. Yeah. Most of it goes to the stomach to to get the nutrients, you know. It, you know, it, it's like a it's like the terminal, any terminal anywhere, you know. Uh, an airplane comes in, or the planes are coming in, and we have the taxis, the cabs. They're going to, you know, they, that's how they make their money, you know. Yeah. Just going to pick people up. So it's it's the same thing, you know. When when food goes into the stomach, you know, the blood just goes to the stomach to get nutrients, yeah. to get the energy. So the, 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 the arteries and the vessels to the head and neck, they're not too much going there, even though the heart is pumping. Yeah. So the blood tends to go, because, you know, that's the normal process of digestion. You know, so uh, on an, and on, that's the reason why after you eat, you feel tired. <laughs> yeah, because everything drains from your, from your head. That's it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Depends on what type of meal you have. If you have a meal that's heavy with, uh, you know, with, with, with protein and meat, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of uh, energy to digest that, that meal, and you know, blood goes there to, you know, to the stomach. A lot more blood goes there, so you're not, you know, you feel more tired and sleepy. Most people after they finish eating, you know, yeah. in Spanish countries they have that's when they have the siesta. No, you know, you know <laughs> after lunch, you know, you take a little nap. <laughs> it's almost it, it's almost compulsory yeah. that, that you that you will be forced you'll be forced to take a nap after you you finish that big meal. Yeah, yeah. you know, and in Guyana, uh, there's a lot of cook up rice and yeah, tea true. and you know all those those fancy foods that that are very rich and then they they put salt beef and pigtail and all all sorts of things in there, the average person. And when they're done with that, it's it's natural. You're gonna feel sleepy and you, you know. Yeah. They, they should be, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, just came to my mind, that it's not a bad idea for major restaurants to have a siesta lounge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard something like that. Some places in some Spanish countries they do. You know, people, people go, well, actually, a lot of times they go home, you know, for lunch. Yeah. And, you know, 
if they have a business or even you know if they know everybody have the idea they know what it's going to close for an hour an hour and a half away right, right right and uh you know uh, they go and they get the nap you know even, well, even in puerto rico it's the same thing what what they might want to do is put a clock next to where they're going to have a nap <laughs> <laughs> they could turn on the alarm so that they could at least you know be awake uh, to get yeah. back to work or to get back to whatever it is that they're doing, if it's a classroom or whatever. You know, it, it, when when I was in school, uh, it was difficult for me to take a nap. Yeah. Yeah, because when you finish when you finish school, you got to get to work, or you got to get to from work, you got to get to school, and then from school you got to get home. And you know, it was full time work, full time school, so it wasn't easy to take a, a siesta. No, you're, you're in a mission. You know, you had to go and get back. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I remember the times when I had to be doing my homework driving. Wow. Yeah, it's really crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's you know, people don't understand that uh, college is, and university is not an easy thing. It's it, if if you really if you're really into that, you know, and you're working full time, mm -hmm. you, you have a it's 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 almost like a full time job twice. Yeah, so, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of fatigue, a lot of fatigue. But but you do it because of, of the fact that you you have an objective, you have a goal, you want to get done. You yeah, you know, you know that it's only going to be for a certain time. And once you through, once you're done with that, then you know you just move on. That's it. But but there are persons who eat and sleep, and that's it. You know. So getting back to our topic, with those who have conditions mm -hmm. that just eat and sleep. All yeah. sorts of things could happen. So True. we want to target those areas, a few of those areas today, and talk about what can happen if you eat the wrong foods, the conditions. For instance, hypertension, diabetes, you know. Hypertension, diabetes, problem, cancer, even cancer. Even cancer. You know, cancer. And, uh, you know, there's some chronic diseases. You know, you can get, you know, gallstones, you know, colon cancer yeah. and for example you know the thing is it, we, you know the reality is when, you, when we're cooking right I, 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 we having all of these festivities what really the thing that really stands out is how sweet things are you know so people oh, tasty. Use a lot of sugar yeah yeah tasty you know even in pepper pot I see people putting sugar in pepper pot well the, the sugar normally normally enhances the flavor See that, and 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 sugar, sugar is very very toxic. It, it's actually carcinogenic. Yeah. Imagine when that. You, when you combine them, when you combine sugar with a lot of other things, I mean, it makes it by itself. I mean, it really, it doesn't really does do much, just like salt by itself. But when you do combine it with a lot of things, you know, it, it has a carcinogenic effect. You know, and it 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 they've done studies. Uh, that relates sugar to a lot of chronic diseases. Yeah, and it's very harmful. And the thing is, sugar sugar doesn't it, it doesn't have any fiber. It doesn't have any vitamins or minerals or anything like that. It actually don't have any nutrients. Yeah, you know, it's really empty. But yet, you know, we are addicted to it because it's sweet. It's, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet. <laughs> you know. And, and, and they've done studies, for example, in um, in the Netherlands. You know, they, 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 they looked at that and said, "Why is it? Why is what, what what is sugar really doing to people?" You know, and what they found is that there's a relationship between gallstones, for example, and and the consumption of, of sugar. You know, and sugar mixed with other things. You know, and also, uh, like I said earlier, there's a lot of chronic chronic diseases, you know, that, that have sugar uh, usage along with other things that, that, that causes it. For example, stomach cancer. You know, they did a study in France and they found out that, that sugar, when sugar is used with saturated fats and you have a lot of, you know, increased calcium and so, and so forth. Ice cream. Mix, exactly. And that, 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 that combination is responsible for, for a lot of stomach cancers. They've done the studies. 
Yeah, I, I can also see linkage to gallstones. Yeah. So sugar, sugar, you know, is is you know, in, in combination with a lot of things, is 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 a very very dangerous thing, you know, and also gastroduodenal also, you know, sugar uh, have a lot to do with that too, you know, colon cancer. They did a study in uh, in, the, in 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 the Negri Institute. It's it's a pharmacological investigation in Italy and Milan, and they found that consumption of sugar, a sugar meal, uh, promotes a lot of cancer, colon cancer, you know. But Dr. Richard, you're killing everybody's appetite. Well, that's the thing, you know, I mean. What are they going to do? There are people who, I, I know people who cannot drink tea without sugar. Yeah. They, they, they have to put the sugar, if it's coffee, if it's tea, they have to put the sugar, you know. The, the thing is, I mean, the sugar and the adding the milk to it, you know, you're making coffee and you're making uh, tea, right? You're adding the milk to it, you know, and, and whatever else you may add to it, that increases the risk of, of colon cancer. They've done the studies, you know, they've done the studies in, so, in, uh, in Italy. You know, and so also it, it, it brings us to the to the question now. Well, if I can't use the sugar, then what do I use? Well, that's the thing. You know, uh, it, it's like a drug addict saying, "Well, I can't use cocaine because cocaine is making me something happen to me. I don't know what, but what else can I use to get high?" <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so you go from one from one evil to the next evil. Yeah, people who have an addiction uh, tend to find some other thing that will give them, uh, and they have the rating, you know, or it may not give them the same high, but it give them the high. People can get to the point where they come and they go sniff gasoline. Yeah, they they even sniff, they sniff glue. Glue, exactly. Yeah, super glue or crazy glue. I understand yeah. that was something yeah. that they did. Yeah, and, and and you know, so sugar, sugar, and the com, you know, sugar, like I said earlier, by itself, you know, it's it, it's not it's not carcinogenic, but when you add to it, mm -hmm. and if you use you use uh, sometimes usage with other things, like for example, in brittle bone disease, you know, osteoporosis and things like that. They've done study in the University of Southern California that shows that the sugar, what sugar does, it depletes calcium reserves. Right, it interferes with absorption. Yeah, and it, it affects your bones. Yeah. So sugar, it's it's uh it's it's important. I mean, so some people say, well, you know, okay, all right, so you you're dealing with plant-based stuff, so let me go to stevia. You know, I mean, they can use stevia. Well, they've been using stevia for a while, you know, and uh, it's it comes from a plant, of course. But I'm very, very sure, and they're doing studies right now as we speak, to see exactly what are the uh, the benefits and, and and the effects of stevia usage. Because a lot of people realize that, especially people who are thinking about their health, uh, they're looking at auto auto means besides cane, cane sugar, you know, cane sugar. But you know, you know, not cutting you, um, there are also studies done on cane juice. Yeah, yeah. And and what, what, what persons don't realize is that cane juice is not sugar. No, it's not. No, no, no. The, the, the sugar is refined from that product. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. So I would normally suggest that persons use cane juice. You know, moderately use cane juice. Mm -hmm. You can freeze it in cubes with the, in your ice pan, and take a cube and sweeten your tea. Or you could take a cube and make you know, or take a few cubes, and you make what you want to make with the cane juice because it is not sugar. It's juice basically, mm -hmm. and cane juice has a lot of benefits. Oh yeah, it, it, it has a lot of minerals and so forth in it, and it's beneficial. But when they when they refine and make the sugar, they take all of that out. Yes, it kills the juice. 
Yeah. It's not juice any longer. Even though, even though it comes from the cane, it is no longer juice. Mm -hmm. You could take that sugar, and some people will do it, and they would add water and blend it up and bring it back to a liquid form and say, oh, I'm using cane sugar, but I'm making juice with it. No, yeah. it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing. It's empty. They already all the sugar. Yeah. So they can use the cane juice. Uh, there's something else that they can use that, that they, they can use a little honey. Yeah, they can, you know. A little honey. And, and some people, you know, it depends on what you're, your medical conditions like for example when we when we do the food list when we screen people i mean honey is on there and, and like i tell people it's based on you what's going on in your body yeah and your body is telling us what's happening what's affecting it so it's not i'm not making the list up yeah okay? so honey might be on there that you can't use if you have if, so if it's on there don't use it yeah if it's on there don't use it but that don't mean that it's not good right exactly it might not be good for you at this time, based on your right. medical condition, you know. But I had someone, I had someone that I screened yesterday, and she, she's in her seventies. She's had an issue. Actually, she, she flew from. She flew from Florida to Guyana to see us. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I told her she didn't have to. <laughs> but uh, uh, she could have gotten us in Florida. But she flew to Florida, to Guyana to see us because she had a major issue over time that was not detected. Okay. And they kept telling her that, uh, no, it's okay, um, it comes with age, and um, you don't need to worry about it. But it, it's affecting her all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, I don't understand how a, how a physician can tell a person, don't worry about it, but it's affecting you all the time. You know, so she came there and we screened her yesterday and we found exactly what is causing her problem. Exactly. Mm. And she was so hard and she was so happy. When we got to the food list, I said to her, I said, well, there are lots of things that you're going to have to, to make a difference in your, in your cooking, in your kitchen and your diet. Mm. But I'm not the one that's deciding that. It's based on what is wrong with you mm. that automatically these things are chosen. And you know what she said? She said, look, Doc, I've been sick for so long. Whatever it takes, I'm willing to make a sacrifice to get rid of this problem. And that's a good perspective to see. I mean, that's good. Yeah, she was willing to do what it takes because she, she tried everything. Mm -hmm. It worked. And now that she found it, and she, it made sense to her when we found what was wrong with her. Mm -hmm. She began to link other things that were happening to her that were associated with the cause of her condition without even knowing it that that, that was it. So she was ready to make the sacrifices. I don't care what it is, whatever it is, I don't care. Christmas coming, I give up the fire pot. I give up whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If I gotta give that up, I give it up. So that is the attitude that people need to take when they want to get better. Yeah, especially if you're sick for a while, you know. I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know. You, you cannot want to go down the same road and expect to get different results. You wouldn't. You you if you keep going along the same road, you can't get to a different destination. Mm -mm. You're going to end up the same place all the time. So if you have an issue that you need to make the adjustments, you've got to make the adjustments if you want to get better. If not, you're going to end up the same place. It's true. I mean, and, um, everything that you've done, like I, I tell people when they, when they come in, because, you know, the, the, the food list, and this is what I tell them, the treatment begins with the food list. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, if everything that you have done in the past and what you're experiencing is based on uh, this list here, these are the foods that have uh, contributed to your medical condition, basically, because right. you what you eat, right? And uh, so you have to, you know, a lot of them you have to, you have to give up, get up, give up for right now. You know, some people are willing to do that, and some people, you know. They'll yeah. do it. Some will reluctantly, and some may not. You know, but it's up to you. If you want to get better, you know, if you're being like that woman, she's been sick for a long time. Oh, a long time. And oh. if you're sick, you don't want to eat food. Sometimes you don't want, you know, you don't want to see anything. You know, you don't have a desire for for anything. You know, but if you have a desire for life, you'll do whatever it takes to get. Exactly. 
exactly. The, the story of health. And yeah. she, she went from doctor to doctor, from clinic to clinic, hospital yeah. to hospital, in America. Mm -hmm. I believe that. And it was it was a uh, it was a a niece of her, a niece of hers who apparently told her that look you've you've gone everywhere you've done everything come home again and we're gonna have you go by Dr. Haynes and mm. uh, visit the clinic there and we'll, they'll find it you know she told them they'll find it and she came and sure enough we found it yesterday wow yeah it is difficult for us not to find things because when you connect it to the devices your body actually speaks yeah and yeah. it's reported and we're able to see it yeah you know? Every organ, it uh, it yells what's wrong with it. You know? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 the thing is, it's, it's like we, you know, every organ has its own function. But when you stub your toe, <laughs> the whole body hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts in your brain. And what? Yeah. It's the same way with with an illness. Yeah. Your brain, everything, every organ is going to tell tell them tell what's going on. You know, it'll tell it'll say. Uh, what's going on primarily and then what else is happening yes like like I, I, I tell somebody that you know your organs telling you even your brains telling you tell yes. what's going on, you know yeah so this is what's going on but this also is going on you know yeah so you know we get to we get to see exactly what's what's happening you know and it, it, it it's like putting the puzzle together then people start lights start coming out like mm -hmm. This happened to me, and that happened. To me. Yeah. I mean, it's there, you know. And the, the beauty, the beauty of what we about what we do is that the the, the person is there to see exactly. They're walking step by step. Yeah. With us to see exactly what's going on. Once they're paying attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 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 that that's the beauty of the whole thing, you know. So, you know, that's important. And the other thing is with this holiday season, and you mentioned it about pop, pepper pot, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, can pep up out anything. We can cook it. <laughs> I remember coming to that realization. So there's a there's a whole lot of consumption of meat, right? Yeah, a lot of flesh. People eat, eat, eat a lot of flesh, and they've done studies in that, also, you know. And and you know, I don't want to rain in anybody's parade, but when when the holidays are over and uh, everything is all done, the the diseases don't take a break. They don't have a holiday. They don't, you know. The organs don't have a holiday. Don't have a holiday. As a result of that, uh, the diseases can't have a holiday. The no. worms don't have a holiday. The worms don't take time off. Don't take no. The viruses, bacteria, all they don't these take things, time off. You know, and and uh, based on how you're feeling, you know, you 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 could be experiencing the holidays, but yet still you're sick, right? But you, and your mind, in your head, you're like, well, you know, I. You know, it, it's a constant reminder to you that you're healthy, you're not feeling healthy. So we're looking at meat, and there's a lot of uh, cancer, meat-related cancers that are involved. And this is just a reminder, you know. Uh, they've done a lot of studies, especially, for example, in, in Uruguay, where they found, you know, uh, that uh, the mountain cancer of the pharynx there's a lot of risk factors. These are things that people do during the holidays. You know, there's a lot of drinking, right? Drinking of consumption of alcohol beverages, eating of eating of salted and pure meat like the ham and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Of that course, of course, we used to have, we used to eat it yeah, long we, years ago. We, 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 we look forward to it. You look forward to your ham and your exactly. your, your baked turkey or chicken and exactly. You know, I mean, it. it it's it's something that we that we all did at some point, most of us. Right. And it, it tasted good, but but one thing that used to happen with us is that before we go back to school, our parents used to flush the system out. That's right. You know, you get that white thing, I forget what they call that thing. And with the water the animal, right? Or they did call it an animal, they used to call it what? They used to do an animal or they give us castor oil. Or castor or oil. Cascar and salts. Or... Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You know, to flush things out, but if we didn't think there's some things that can't you can't really flush out like that. You know, 
So the eating of the ham and things like that, that's the risk factor for mouth, throat cancer, and mouth. Yeah. You know. Colon. Huh? Yeah. Cancer, colon cancer. Colon cancer too, you know. Uh, breast cancer. Uh, so kidney cancer. Yeah, yeah. You know. mm -hmm. So it's very, very important that you know that, you know, these meat, these meats, that we eat them, you know, uh, a potential cancer causing situation. It then depends on how you prepare it. Yeah. The, the other thing that, that I found, and I spoke about it before, is that many of the of the, the butcheries don't sell you fresh meat. Mm. Some of the meat would have been chemicalized to, to make it keep longer, mm -hmm. to make it look fresh. Right, right, right. And, so, and you think you cook on those chemicals, but you don't. You can't. Mm -hmm. they, you know, so we, so that, that's uh, added to, to the complications of the meat itself. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they add in even uh, things to make it look like blood, but it's not really blood. Chemicals. Yeah, it's a lot of chemicals in that. That's a big, big problem right there. You know, that's an addition to everything. You know, a lot of hormones are added. But the the meats already have hormones. That, that's another problem. Plus, they add additional to it. You know, but there 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 are legitimate studies that, that show that showing that uh, these things are carcinogenic and they're causing cancer. You know, even Harvard Public School of Public Health uh, showing that uh, red meat. If people eat meat, for example, five days a week. You know five days a week to eat meat. And what the School of Public Health in Harvard showed that if, the, if you eat six grams or 600 grams of meat, which is like one and, one and a half pounds of meat uh, for a, a length of time, you'll get cancer. You know, you'll get cancer. And, and a lot of times people eat meat like that. Are you still there, Dr. Joe? Yeah, I'm right here listening. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't see you. But <laughs> oh, you're not seeing me. Yeah. I'm right here. I'm right here. I, I think the uh, the studio has it on there, and they may have yeah. uh, fixed it so that, that you know. But I can see you. You should you should be able to see me. Yeah, yeah. No, I can. No, I can. <clears throat> yeah, but but the, the studies, man. The study, it's out there. There's no. You know, there's no, there's no question about it. You know, they've done the studies, and then the fats and meats and so forth, uh, really, really do, do a number. You know, uh, the different, different meat people, you, they grade the meat based on the, the, the fat uh, distribution. You know. Yeah. Yeah. If the, if the meat is nice and fleshy and fatty, it's, it's lean. Yeah, lean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all that is carcinogenic. <laughs> well, the other thing, the other thing that is that happens too is that that even though the meat itself comes with that, how they cook the meat also right. adds to that. How it's prepared. Mm -hmm. You put it on the grill, barbecue. Yeah. You know, that carbon comes. Uh, uh, the the cadmium. Yeah, it adds, cal adds calcium to it. You know, I mean, I mean, adds cancer to it. So it's 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 important important how how we look at these things you know people with breast cancer for example um, they've done a study in Norway and they showed that um, if you if women for example who eat more than meat five times a week right and they eat uh, consistently and people eat like that you know everything has to, every meal has to have a meat in it they cannot have a complete meal without meat right they cannot. They, they will not get protein in any other form except by eating meat. Meat, yeah. That, that's it, what. That's what they're told. So, so this meat is really causing, you know, in women especially, a lot of breast cancer. Not, not talking and, about the estrogen. And, and in men. Yeah, men too. Men can have breast cancer too. Yeah. And, you know, all the and 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 all the cancers. You know, and 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 so it's important. It's important, and using using dairy too is another problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. You know, 
especially men with prostate cancer and so forth. So I mean, is it, you know, it's 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 a problem. So I'm not going to rain rain on people's parade, but what can we use? We know that they love me, but is there any alternative? You know, of course there are alternatives. Uh, there, there, there are persons who would have adopted the life of a vegetarian who don't eat any flesh and don't also eat any processed foods. Mm -hmm. You know, they make their own uh, high protein foods by using the peas and beans and legumes and things like that. Right. And they make their loaves and they make their, you know, they make all sorts of things. They become creative. Like I, I would say to people when they, when the, the sheet or the list of foods looks, looks enormously high, and they say, well, Doc, I, I don't know what else to eat. I mean, there's nothing else to eat. No, it says, well, get creative. You know, just get, just become creative. You can substitute what you get from 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 the flesh with, with something that's vegetable, and it's more wholesome, it's more healthy, mm -hmm. and it will be very much uh, relief on your digestive system. Yeah. It's, See, it's easy to digest. And, and you know it's it, it has and it's amazing I mean for example if you look at legumes for example the beans and so forth uh, it, 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 they have more iron than me I, I couldn't believe it but they've done studies to show that people when you talk to somebody and say well why, why are you eat meat why you eat especially red meat well I like you know because the red iron I gotta get my iron gotta get my protein and things yeah. But when it did, when it did the study, it, it, it shows that even legumes by itself have more protein. It, it's superior in protein than, than meat. Mm -hmm. You know, beans. That's why some countries have as their staple, you know, rice and beans. Yeah. Uh, but Puerto Rico and then Belize and places like that. I mean, if you look at, at what their main meals are, it's, it's rice and beans. Rice and beans. You know. And, and the beans have more iron and so forth. Some beans is, is a good source of carbohydrate. And they have lots of minerals. Yeah. The, the only thing that some, you know, like legumes are lacking, which is really found in meat, I mean, it, it's a B12. But you can always add B12, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And You and can take B12 supplements and that'll take care of that. Right. And the... And the, and the uh, the, the, the legumes don't have cholesterol. <laughs> the meat does, right? Well, the, 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 talking about cholesterol, the, the legumes will not have cholesterol, but how they prepare the foods can create oh, the, the factor that will cause cholesterol. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I found that a problem with vegetarians, especially, and Guyanese, is that we fry everything. Everything has to be fried. Everything has to be, you know, it's not, it's, it, it, you've got to use the oil. It doesn't taste good unless you grease it, you know. <laughs> when you talk to people, they say, well, i got to grease the lungs, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's the, kind of, that's the kind of education that they have when it comes to the grease. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that the grease blocks the arteries up. Yeah. It blocks up the, the, um, the islets of lager hands, which, which is really important for the pancreas. Right. You know, when you get blood sugar. It, 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 it blocks up the liver, the liver becomes fatty, mm -hmm. you see, and, and, and people don't take into consideration yep. that every organ that is tampered with creates problems for another organ. It's true. It's true. You know, uh, while the organs are all independent, but they're, in, they're, dependent, they're dependent. They work together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They work together. If you, if you were to analyze even a simple bicycle, Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you put the chain on that on that sprocket and you pedal, it's not only the chain that's moving, the wheels are turning. Yeah. The lights can light because there's a generator attached to the wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, everything happens just from a simple chain and sprocket. You see, so the same mechanism works for your body. Just because, and you know, I was reading an article the other day where. Where they were, they were using the analogy of, and I think I talked about it a little bit, where which organs are not important in your body. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh. Uh, which organs are not important in your body? 
that, that's, that was the topic. And they were actually pointing out where organs are not important. For instance, your thyroid. They say that's not important. Whoa. But they, they're crazy because you take out your thyroid and you suffer the rest of your life. Yeah. That's your, that's your, that's your, your, the factor that is responsible for your hormones, your metabolism. I mean, a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot. Yeah. You know, and then they say your your gallbladder is not important. These guys are sick. No, it, 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 it's just a lot of theory. You know, if 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 you were able to take their gallbladder out and see how they, <laughs> 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 you know. You 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 if you, you you're using the postulating the theory, so let me let me uh, let me remove your gallbladder and see. And let's see what happens. We can study you, you know, and see what happens to you. Yeah. No, God God made us. We are wonderfully and prayerfully made, and every every organ, every cell, has a specific. They have a function, each one. And and the ones, the cells and the organs and the things that they're not familiar with right now as to their true function. That's what research is all about. They find out a lot of things about a lot of things we know about, and they find out a lot of things that they do, and they didn't really realize that they did it. They do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't go there. I mean, if, if people take out, you know, just they, they go and take out even your the adenoids, you have some. You know, exactly. That's responsible for your immune system. For, you exactly. Know. They, they don't realize. They don't. I, I don't know. I I wonder sometimes where. Where they, they, these these physicians get their theories from? They say that your appendix is not important. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they don't, it's because they don't understand it, and then when they do understand, it's too late. You can't it's put too it late. back. You can't put it back. Oh no no no! You no. cannot put it back. You can't put it back. For instance, well, uh, I had I had someone yesterday again. Yes, yesterday morning, who took the thyroid out. Mm. And 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 she was told that she had a nodule in the thyroid, and uh, look, it's best to take it out. Wow. You know, and uh, since she took the thyroid out, she's all messed up. She yeah. can't sleep. You know, she's That's getting it. fat, gaining weight. Metabolism. She's gotta, she got to be on thyroxin all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. see, and, so and you give up an organ that you can cre you can fix, you can correct what is wrong with it. To yeah. get drugs the rest of your life, and they're not getting it. They're not getting it. These guys are there to push drugs. You know, the thing is, I mean, I, I, I can honestly say that, it, you know, not every position is, is the same. You know, some some may be doing that, you know, and some, some of them really are looking and thinking about uh, long term problems. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the, the ones that would honest with you and tell you hey you know uh, I, if it was me I wouldn't do this and those are those are those are good and then it's a lot of good good guys of course, and, of course. And, and, you know, a lot of them are a lot of a lot of them will turn into alternative methods of, of treating treatment they're getting tired of pushing the same drug all the time because there's a I'm lot not getting of, the results a lot of side effects for, for, for and I think people are wise enough to what's going on you know and they're realizing that um, you know, we got to get back to the natural means of, in which we can deal with things, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I was always taught that you start simple first, and then you move on. Yeah. You know? But sometimes you get we have a simple issue with something, and then we want to, you know, it's like for example, you have a you have a little uh, a little paper fire, and then you go get a fire hydrant hose to. to <laughs> You know, <laughs> it can be easily squished. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a match. You got a match. Take this burning, and you want to run for an extinguisher. You could stand on it and burn out it. Yeah, you can blow it out. Blow it out. Look at all the the other means to which you know. So it's just um, I'm thinking we just have to, you know, have people start using you know their own common sense. You know. Yeah. And. uh or Especially. seek another seek another opinion from a from an alternative yeah. person. Look at it. Have somebody look at it in another way. I mean, there's so many, there are so many ways of dealing with situations with your body. So many modalities. So many things that you know can be of help to to, to individuals. You know, rather than just locking yourself in, in, a, in a in a situation where 
there's no turning back. Once you commit and you go in that direction, you know, uh, it's hard. It, you know, I, mean, I can't say there's no, but it's hard to really turn back. Yeah. Because you know? you create more of a problem for yourself. You know. Uh, well, the, the other thing, the other thing that uh, that happens is that it is so easy for for a woman to to be convinced that look, you need to remove your uterus because you have a little cyst there or a little fibroid or a little, you know, you want to take take it out because, you know, you never know as it gets, as it gets, uh, as it gets bigger, it will create bigger problems. So you say, well, yeah, well, you just take it out then. And then when they take the uterus out, they end up having problems the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. They got to go into a situation where, you know, they they're, they have to be on, on, on some sort of, uh, Estrogen production medicines. Yeah. And it's happening to younger and younger people all the time. All the time. But but I think uh, I think the population they're getting smarter, they're getting a little wiser. And it, it's not easy now to convince the average person because they're saying, Look, you know what, let me let me take a second look. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a wise thing. That's a wise a wise position to to, to get to. And people, people are becoming more aware um, what they're eating. Yeah. So, you know? so talking back about eating, what should the times going to do look like? That, that, well, yeah, that's the question. You know, if you're used to the big turkey, you know, you have to have your 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 meal. I think if you know, if you if you have a, a chronic illness, and you know that it's Dietary related. Why? Why are you gonna go and subject yourself to one day eating something? For example, people who have uh, H. pylori. You know, the holidays are here, and uh, they say, "Well, I've been good all year. I have not eaten any meat, no fish. I followed the the, uh, the dietary recommendation, but then just this one time." You know, this one day, you know, celebrate. You can, uh, you can hurt yourself. You put them back, all that bacteria in yourself. So, what should a meal look like? For me, my meal really is is more health, uh, more more plant based. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use soy. And do a lot of things with soy. Soy and it, by itself, uh, it's it's sort of a neutral sort of thing. You can, I mean, there are people who can cook soy, and you think you're eating. You know, think you're eating real meat. <laughs> real meat, and you gotta keep questioning: Is this, is this, uh, <laughs> you know, is this, is this meat? Are you sure this is meat? And then there's something called: I mean, these are these are all, uh, you know, alternative to, to to meat. Because basically, to be honest, the whole holidays for the most part rest around three things: and meat. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Three things and meat. Are uh, your black cake and all this stuff? That's what's that? What's all that? When you really sum it all up, it's sugar, right? Almost everything in there is sweet. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. And then your 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 uh, cook up, your, even your cook up rice and your your um your what what's the thing again? The your, your salt beef and all it's meat, right? <laughs> your pork, your, your ham, all meat. So. If you're if you're looking to be healthy, then you you know uh, use some soy. You can even use gluten. Some people can make gluten to you know. Yeah. Or some people some, some people have some people have gluten intolerance. Oh, and some people have gluten intolerance, so they can't use the gluten. That's right. They, they, they have they are uh, they have right. celiac disease. They can't use gluten. They can't use the gluten. So and then there's some people who who can't use soy. Or they don't want to use the soy because they they understand that soy has estrogen, and it's going to interfere with all sorts of things. But but I, I always ask the question: if the soy was dangerous, and of course, of course there's there's soy that that is not, um, you know, it has been tampered with. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. It was GF, it's GMO, it's genetically right. modified. Right. So you've got to be able to know the sources of your soy. Right. True. And, um, and then you could make anything with it. You can take soy and, and, and make make all sorts of loaves and, and, and yeah. stews and 
and, and all sorts of things. Because yep. we, we do use soy periodically, but we're very choosy with our soy. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of foods that are prepared. Now, like, for instance, I had a, I, I just felt like eating a, a burger patty two days ago. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> strange enough, I had a plant-based burger patty in the freezer. Yeah. Totally plant-based, non-GMO. And when I made that that uh, that burger patty into into the, the burger, I mean, you you mm. never thought that you're eating something that's not not flesh. It was that's so true. good. That's true. And it, so and they, good. they have in the market right now a lot of things that are yeah, a lot of substitutes for for um, animal yeah. protein. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you could you, you could actually prepare a very delicious meal using foods that are not uh, the hurt your system you can still make your chow mein, you can still make your cook up you can still make your macaroni mm -hmm. you know but you don't have to use the the cheeses that are harmful the cheeses that are not harmful now there's so many substitutes out there that that can provide you what you need and what nutrients you can get without going the animal way yeah and and, and that, that's very true that's very true yeah, and 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 you, you eat it, and it it tastes better. Delicious, I, delicious. And delicious. It, it's not it's not any strain on your digestive system, and it's not unhealthy. Exactly. I I had I had with that. I did. Uh, I had a turn plantain, and mm. I cut off the two ends, and I I microwaved it for six minutes. Wow. And when I opened that plantain and took out the skin. You thought you were eating cheese. Really? It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. You know, so you you can you can become creative if you're serious about eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And you will get foods that are nutritionally nutritionally balanced. And you know, you you have to fight to lose weight. You have to fight to stop gaining weight. It's so rich. Yeah. You know, because the body is working, it's absorbing everything. You're going to the toilet two or three times a day, having your, your bowels, you know, you're using your bowels. And um, it, it, look, when you when you follow what your body says, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. That's true. You can't go wrong. That's true. And more and more people are learning about what we do, even though we're going to have the skeptics. You can't help that. They're learning about what we do. And, and, and those who would have wanted to follow the process. I gave you two quick examples, and we are we are almost out of time. Oh, really? We only have a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. Last week, I lost two of my friends. Wow. They died. Two two of them. One was a professional drummer. He was an instructor, and the other one was a was an uh, was a, a you know an officer, a custom officer. And I screened I screened the drummer uh, several times, and the last time I screened him was two years ago. And every time I screen him, I would say to him, look, you know what? You need to stop doing this, or you need to eat this way. Don't eat late when you finish playing at 2 o'clock in the morning. Don't eat anything heavy. Don't, because you're going to go to sleep. You're gonna... And he did it for a while, and he was so healthy. And coronavirus came, and we lost a little touch. And um, I spoke with him, you know, a few months back. He wasn't so well. And I said, well, I can screen you. Let's see what's going on. He never came. And the next thing I know, I got a text from his wife that he died. He's dead. Oh. Had he followed the process? Had he stayed with it? Had he continued? He was coming around because he even told me when he went to his doctor, the doctor well, no, how come your A1C, how come your A1C is so good? You know, how come your cholesterol went down? What is it that you're doing? And he went back into the old habits, and there he goes. Yeah. The other one came, and I screened him, found all of his issues. I told him, I says, you need to stop doing certain things. You've got to change your diet. It all begins with what you consume. People mm -hmm. don't realize that. You know, I said, you got to make, if you want to get better, you've got to make the changes. Well, I didn't hear from him since I screened him, and I didn't see him back. Next thing I know, he's gone. Got a text says, last week, he's dead. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't realize that when you, when, when you screen you, and we find what your body says is wrong with it. It's not us telling you. This is not a diagnosis because of what we think. This is a diagnosis coming from what your body says. Yeah. 
It's going to when, when, when your body reveals what is wrong with you, and then the dietary factors are put in place automatically, you say, avoid these things. If you want to live, do it. If yeah. you want to overcome your problem, do it. Yeah. If not, you want to pay a price. Maybe not right away, but eventually it'll get to you. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh. We only have one minute, Dr. Richard. Yeah. You or not. With less than one minute, all, all I would say that to those who are listening, you, you really are what you eat. Let your medicine be your food and your food your medicine. Keep away from, if you, you know, you should. I, I was going to say if you can, but you must. From all uh, animal protein, meats, dairy, also keep away from meats and dairy. And, and trust me, you'll see a, a total difference in your life. Whatever ailments you may be experiencing, you know. Even your age, even your age will be reversed. The way your body looks, the aging of the body will slow down. Okay. Even your mental status. Some people come down early because of their diet with Alzheimer's and dementia and things like that. Yeah. Trust me. The start, you know, the studies are there. I'm looking I'm looking at the studies. Okay? And the studies are there and it shows exactly if you get away from eat meat, any meat, I don't mean fish is meat, chicken is meat. Not just red meat, every meat. And you get away from cheese, milk, and all all dairy. You will be healthy, no doubt about it. You'll live healthy, okay. And you adopt a whole food, plant-based diet. That's it. You know. No Thank you, Doctor Richard. I am we out of time. I really appreciate you on the program. We'll continue next week. Yeah. Next Thursday, same time, same place. And I want to thank my operator and those who are watching, listening. Next time, make some calls. I know we talked a lot. Maybe take your notes and give us a call next Thursday. Until we meet again, God bless you. Have a good night. So long. All right. Looking for a place for the whole family? Come down to the Toucan yeah. Mall in Amelia's Ward, Linden. It's the mall that has it all. We have great food, a relaxing atmosphere, and activities for all ages. Tennis, swimming, and a playground. But the fun doesn't stop after dark. There's even a bar and an arcade. And if you aren't ready to go home yet, we've even got a spacious room for your comfort, complete with air conditioning, Wi-Fi, and a private bathroom. The Toucan Mall can also facilitate your events in our spacious conference hall. We also have a theater with films for the entire family. It's the Toucan Mall located in Amelia's Ward, Linden.